Conceive of said patry, not self but country, is the unofficial motto of the Navy. This phrase commands the members of its fleet to remain loyal to their country over themselves. This phrase requests for one to lay their life down for not just themselves, but the cause. Every Navy member, including retired Q and Bob Dons, swore to honor this the day they hopped on the bus to boot camp. We all know of the basic military service stories told by all veterans, but what about everything before and after? When are veterans asked what led them to join the military instead of what they did in the military? Today though, all these questions will be answered. The entire life story of retired Navy QM Bob Dons, a tale of leaving home, lifelong friendships, and perseverance. A life well lived, most would say, but how? The journey starts at the very beginning. Dons was born on March 2, 1951 to John and Midge Dollins. Dollins' father was a grocery store manager. For a while, his mother was a stay-at-home mom, but later became a reading teacher. Dollins also had three siblings, an older brother Daniel, a younger brother Brad, and a younger sister Susie. His oldest brother Dan also served in the military as a Marine. For the most part though, Dollins recalled nothing that caused him to join the military. He was fresh out of high school working as a grocery store box boy when he received his draft notice. When asked about his feelings, when he got drafted. There was the old, oh, crap. Now what do I do? <laughs> After his draft notice, Dons had to decide what branch of the military. And I said, well, and again, this is Vietnam War was going on. So I said, well, I, last I heard, I haven't heard about any Viet Cong sinking a Navy ship. So, so figured Dons. In the end, he opted on joining the Navy, his first choice. He entered the recruiting office and jumped on the next bus to the San Diego boot camp. During boot camp, Dons at 19 was the oldest, which made him platoon leader. Dons, though, for the most part, couldn't remember. Well, you know, and one of the funny things, a lot of the stuff is just kind of a blur, blur to me. Blur to me. Dons had an interest in direction and navigation. This led him to gain the rank of QM, or quartermaster. The quartermasters are the navigators of the ship. Towards the end of boot camp, all members had to choose their specialty. He at first chose to join the submarine division. At this time, he went through a medical exam where he found out he couldn't hear in his right ear, causing him to be ineligible. He then heard about the LSTs that were being built in San Diego and signed up to join that division. Interestingly enough, Dons ended up being assigned to a ship going to Norfolk, Virginia on the East Coast. And being that he was from California, that was across the country. The ship's official name was the LST-1197, or the USS Barnstable. LST happens to stand for a landing ship tank, which stands for exactly what the LSTs do. When assigned, Dons became part of a team with multiple navigators who would navigate the ship using Dead Reckoning, Navsat, and Omega, to name a few. This is where he would finally meet longtime Navy buddy Mike Sterling, a QO of the same status. When we're calling Sterling, he Your grandpa Mike would always talk about he he was proud of it. He grew up on the eastern shore. Eastern shore. He also made it known how much of a character Sterling was and repeatedly said how much of a great friend he and his wife Rita were to Dons and his wife. Now, the ship that Dons was on completed multiple missions, but the largest, if not most important, was the entering of the Suez. That was, that was our was it, uh, touch of history. The ship in the year 1974 was commissioned to the Mediterranean for their spring deployment, unknown to them. When the LST-1197 arrived in the Mediterranean, the amphibious ship picked up the Turkish Marines for training. All of a sudden, though, the LSD-1197 received a message to turn around and let the Turkish Marines off and then go back on route. Another radio message then came across stating the coordinates of where there was a 98% chance of all mines being cleared. Later, though, the ship received a message stating to disregard those coordinates and use the ones that were best being sent over now. Don't remember... 98% clear. So that was the, that was the first... A little touch of excitement. Touch of excitement. Objects that were cleared are a full-size jet, bombs and missiles, and even some tanks. The crew then safely passed through Port Said. 
After this, the crew then docked and stayed in the port for a short time before being relieved of their duties there. In the Navy, you have serious missions, but also times of great fun and life experiences. One such for Don's was when he and his crew were stationed in the Caribbean. There well, that's where I learned, you've heard of the drink, rum and coke? Rum and coke. It was not only in Ochi Rios, Jamaica, but also down near the Guantanamo Bay U.S. Navy base. Don's recalled many memories from this time. For example, time spent with the British Navy and the customs these men carried from their country to others. The, the idea of not drinking on duty was as preposterous to them, almost as much as it was to drink on duty to the men of the U.S.'s LST-1197. At this time, Don started to near the end of his- Almost re-enlisted. I almost did because the economy, was, I didn't know what was going to be waiting for me when I got back because mm -hmm. I really hadn't done much. I, like I say, when I got enlisted, I was a box boy at a grocery store. In the end, he and his new wife made the journey back to California, their home state, to start a new portion of their life. When Don's and his wife arrived home, he decided to go back to school. To afford college and starting up a brand new life, he needed to find a job. A professor at his college set him up with a job cutting firewood. This lasted for three months until he found a job as a manager at Kmart, bringing him back to where he began, oddly enough. He thanks another one of his Navy buddies that gave him the idea to take an introduction to data processing class that led him to then major in computer programming. He would later get a job as a computer programming trainee and one day would become a computer programmer. About five years ago, Don's retired from that position not before learning the art of website creating slash programming. He invested in a book of dummies on website programming and practiced with his old Navy. I used my pictures from the Navy as a start. And I started out small, trying to, you know, getting the pictures and scanning them and putting, making it. And then the, it, the webpage just started to grow and grow and grow. These days, though, Don's is living out his life close to the San Gabriel Valley in California, near the picturesque mountain range. It goes by, you forget the bad stuff, and all you remember is the good stuff. And again, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Recently, his wife joined him in retirement. Nowadays, he looks back on his service with a smile, and he remembers the fun times and the friendships. He met up 40 years later with his Navy buddy, Mike Sterling, for one last hurrah in Washington. Yeah, and it had been 40 years. And it was like, it was just like a day had gone by. A day had gone by. Unfortunately, in 2013, Sterling would pass away due to complications of diabetes. His friend, Dolan, though, would carry his memory on for many years to come and still honor it to this day. Bob Dolan's story is one of fond memories of drinking rum and Cokes in the Caribbean brushing history with passage through the Suez Canal. More valuable, though, is the friendships and memories created before and after his service. The lives he touched and the accomplishments that he made are what defines him to this day. Thank you, Q and Bob Dons, for being a great pal and an even greater role, mo role model for all us all. Your story with many others deserves to be marked down in history to be remembered by generations to come.